Welcome to Game Dev Guidance. In this video, Control Through Code, Part 3, we will be implementing jogging and running. The jog will be added to the existing locomotion blend tree, and the run will be triggered when the user presses the left shift key. Check the description for links to previous videos in this series if you have not been following along. And if you find this tutorial useful, please like and subscribe to show support in this journey of game development. I went ahead and downloaded two more animations from Mixamo. This jogging animation. And this sprinting animation. Pause the video here to get your animations renamed, imported, and set up. Let's start by implementing the jog. Double click the locomotion blend tree to open it, and make sure it is selected. Add a new motion field, and set it to the jog animation. Make sure your thresholds are set up like this. Under the parameters tab, click the plus button to add a new boolean. Name it, is running. Navigate back to the base layer, and drag your sprint animation into the animator. Make a transition from locomotion to sprint and select the transition. Untick, has exit time, and add a new condition, setting, is running, to true. Now make a transition from sprint to locomotion and select it. Untick has exit time, and add another new condition, setting is running, to false. Save your project, and enter play mode. By toggling the is running boolean, you will see the transition fire off, and your character begin to sprint. This is getting exciting. Let's set this up to work in our code. Inside our player controller script, just beneath our crouching controls, add a new if statement to check if the user is pressing down the left shift key using input dot get key and checking if move amount is greater than zero. If these conditions are true, we will use the set bool method of the animator to set is running to true. We will also need an else statement for when the user releases the key to set the is running boolean of the animator back to false. Save the script, and head back to Unity. Enter play mode, and try holding shift while moving the player around. Notice how the is running boolean is set to false if we're not moving. This is because we make sure move amount is greater than zero in our condition. Now toggle into the crouch state, then try to run. You will not be able to, and this is intentional. But if this is something you would prefer in your game, then make a new transition from the crouch locomotion to the sprint. With the transition highlighted, untick has exit time, and add a condition, setting, is running, to true. We must also make a quick change to our code. Back in Visual Studio, we must set the, is crouching, boolean, to false, when we enter the run state. Save the script, and give it another go. Now we can sprint out of our crouching state. Excellent! Let's fix a couple issues with our animations now. Enter play mode and try targeting our player's crouch. Watch how his feet seem to dip under the floor. This is just unacceptable, but thankfully, an easy fix. Highlight the crouch locomotion blend tree, and make sure that, foot, IK, is checked. And that's it! No more weird foot dip. The second potential issue we may have, is the player moving very slowly over time while in the idle state. Select the player from the hierarchy, and watch his transform component for a few seconds. Notice how the X and Z elements of the position field seem to be gradually increasing, thus moving the player without our consent. To fix this, select the idle animation, and navigate to the animation tab in the inspector. Under root transform position, XZ, make sure that bake into pose is checked, then apply your changes. Highlight your player again, and you'll now see that the positions are no longer changing. This is good, but we need to do this for the idle crouch animation as well, just to be safe. Excellent! The last one is more of a preference rather than a bug, but if how quickly the player stops moving when you release the movement keys bugs you, then we should add some damping to the move amount boolean from code. Switch back to Visual Studio and find the line of code where we set the animator move amount parameter. Add a small value like 0.25 for the third argument and pass time dot delta time for the fourth. Save your script and head back to Unity. 
If you prefer your moving animations to dampen into their idle states, then you're good to go. Otherwise, simply remove those arguments out of your code to convert back to the original way, and you're also good to go. Congrats! Now you know how to implement running in your game using the animator controller and control it through code. I hope you found this video useful, and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you'd like to show support for my channel, please consider giving that thumbs up button a gentle smash. And if you're enthusiastic about continuing this exciting journey through game development with me, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Remember, game development is a journey. See you at the next checkpoint.